So, so uh, the four schools have been included amongst that, uh, Ahlul Sunnah. So anyone outside of the four schools, and in particular those who are from the, uh, the creed of Abu Hassan Ash'ari, the Maturidi, and uh, mainstream Hanbali uh, belief, although historically the Hanbalis were not really included in, in terms, those who had different aqidah from Maturidi and Ash'ari, they were, historically were not included in Mahal Sunnah, at least by the mainstream Maturidi and Ash'ari, because they considered their beliefs to be anthropomorphic in a sense, and so were outside of the realm of Ahl Sunnah were considered to be people of Bid'ah. Uh, and so, whereas today there are some who are argue that you know, they're included also uh, within that, that, those parameters. You know, and so it gets very sticky, you see, that um, some who may argue for that, I, don't, I would think that for me, from what I can see and know of the Islamic history, there's no basis to make an argument that, that these are three schools, all three of them were accepted historically, which I don't think, I don't see any evidence for that, you know, but some have made that claim today. Um, but at the same time, I'm not averse to uh, being more accommodating of others in terms of their beliefs. You know, I have no problem with uh, people who can find a valid defense for some of the things that are attributed to Ibn Taymiyyah, Shaykh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, you know, if there's some valid tafsir of some of the problematic statements that he's made in, or even things that he was accused of have doing. Uh, uh, to uh, which fall into the, the category of tenthi, of so actually portraying or illustrating how Allah does something, uh, that uh, I have no problem with that. You know, I just, and generally we should avoid um, um, taking positions about the dead. They're they're hisabuhum Allah. They reckoning with God. But in terms of the people of today, uh, I just think that we should interact with every individual as an individual, uh, whether they originate from the Shi'i uh, or Ibadi or whatever, uh, Ismaili, whatever, you know, whatever particular faction they come from, then we should interact with them uh, with the type of prophetic gentleness that we learn from our messenger, alayhi salatu salam, in hopes that uh, if there is something seriously wrong with what they believe and how they practice, that perhaps we can reach them because of them feeling the warmth and the sincerity that comes from us uh, that tells them that we have genuine concern about your well-being, your spiritual well-being. And I think that's the better approach, and that's the approach that our messenger slides. Suddenly we see him taking uh, throughout his, his sirah. You see it over and over and over. You know? And so what's happened is that um, the codification, catechization of the, uh, the creed, doctrine, and the law has gotten Muslims more focused on what's in the book than actually lived experience. Whereas like, you know, you might have a good relationship with a Shi'i today, <laughs> but all of a sudden you learn as a Sunni, you're supposed to deal with them in a certain way, you know, then all of a sudden you become harsh. You follow me? That, that's the biggest problem. You see, it's like, because it's like, you know, it becomes what we call, it's not even theology anymore, because it's actually, or aqidah, or belief, or creed, it's, now, it's, called, it's dogma. You know, it's dogma, you know, we learn from the books. How do that? With all the respect, you know, to the ulama, and we study these books, and we should continue to study them, like the Tahawiyah, and the Johara Tawheed, and, and books like that. We should study them, and there's, so, there's a whole lot to learn from them. But at the same time, we have to be very careful to bind to the sectarianism that they reinforce and the parochialism that are reinforced by many people who teach these texts today. Uh, they teach them in a way where they want you to uh, be concerned about affiliation with certain groups and your dislocation from others. And, and that becomes the most important thing. You're being concerned about you living up, following your principles, the principles of your school, as opposed to uh, more broader principles which are taught by the Quran and were taught by the Sunnah of the Messenger of So hopefully that gives you a good answer.